Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Ian Wildman again, uh, along with uh, Chris McDonald. Chris is a um, head teacher at Kilmore Juniors, and um, he noticed that I'd been doing short little brief things about the animals me and my son keep at home. For the kids in my school, like we can work in Green Bank Primary, and he kind of grabbed hold of me and asked, asked if I would like to make it upscale a little bit, make it more um, available to more children, more, more people particularly in the Liverpool area, who might be in the school hubs and things. So um, we did um, McLean Spectres, a type of stick insect, on Friday last week. And today we're going to do uh, some, some, some stuff about scorpions. It's probably not going to last as long as it did on Friday, uh, if for no other reason. That it's a naughty little thing, and if um, it might try and bite me. It might not bite me, it might try and get me with its pincers, and it might try and get me with the, with the with the venomous bulb on its back, so I have to be a little bit more careful with this thing. Um, so, I think Chris is going to start off with, uh, uh, did you say you were going to do an intro, uh, uh, an introductory poll, Chris, about um, who uh, who's on, uh, what yeah. unique group? Yeah, okay, so in, on your screen in a second, there's going to be a poll, and it's just going to ask you which year group you're in, year one, year two, year three, year four, or year five and six. Uh, the poll is on your screen now. This is just so that we can get an idea of the age group of the children here, so I can gauge um, at what level I can talk to you. If, if, if all the children are year one, then there's terminology that I wouldn't use. If there's some from year six or beyond, then I may just say other things that, uh, that, that our children might understand. So we're doing really well, got 59% uh, people have voted so far. Uh, looks like we've got quite a lot of people, almost half of the people who are with us today are from year five or year six. Okay, so, okay, yeah. We'll just leave the poll open a few more moments and then we'll close it. Okay, we'll close the poll. Okay, and it's mainly um, lap five and six, did you say, yeah? So there's the results on screen now. So yeah, 44% are from year five or year six. And I think we've got maybe one, maybe two people who are in year one. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm going to get the animal out now. Um, so I'm gonna, you, you, you need to understand that. It, he might not be out for a long time. It depends on what mood he's in. Um, I'll show you him on the inside of the box first. So this is a this is just a, a, a tub that we, we get um, live food. All these animals, these um, spiders and scorpions and um, the geckos that Billy keeps uh, and, the, and some of the mantis, they all eat live food. They will not accept uh, any kind of dead food. They're just not, it's, they're not programmed that way. So we have to buy in things like locusts and crickets. Um, Dubai roaches, wax moths, uh, wax worm larvae, all sorts of different foods that we feed to them. And this is just a carry tub. This scorpion does not live in this box. It lives in a, a, a tank that's probably too big for it, to be honest. Uh, it lives in a big tank um, uh, with all the facilities that he needs in them. Uh, so I'm going to get him out and see what CRBA is and let you have a proper look at him. Okay. So this is going the wrong way. Thank you. This is that way a emperor scorpion. It's a male, or it's a believed to be a male. And um, go back. He is. I might have to just cover him in a second, just for a, just to keep him, because otherwise I can't concentrate on you and the scorpion at the same time. So let's just see if he behaves himself, and he'll sit still. Then I'll chat and talk um, while he's on this while he's on this. He might settle, we'll see, just give him a couple of seconds. So this is a, an emperor scorpion, and he is um, an adult male. Um, it's a type of arachnid, so it's in the same family as spiders and mites. Um, so you know, sometimes if you go in the garden, you see little tiny red, tiny little red animals um, running about, they're mites, so they're a kind of arachnid. 
Scorpion, the Ragnar, uh, and, and so are spiders, which we'll, we'll look at in a few more days. Uh, so these things are um, uh, venomous as opposed to being poisonous. And the reason for that is if you are um, an animal that has a sting like he has, he's got a, a, a bulb on the end of his tail, and that take that bulb on the end of that bulb is like a is like a um, a hypodermic needle. So if you've ever been to doctors and had a needle, that's a that's a, a thin metal tube um, that enables the doctor to in, inject things into you. Well, this the end of his tail is exactly like that. The same with um, if you're a venomous snake, you have teeth with holes down the middle of them. Um, if you're a rear, if you're a front fang snake, if you're a rear fang, it works a little bit differently than that. Uh, or if you are a plant nettle, I'm sure plenty of the audience have been um, stung by the plant nettle. That's a venomous plant, not a poisonous plant. So um, on that leaf that that gets you, there are thin barbs that are made of um, silica. And what happens is the, 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 the barb injects or, or penetrates your skin, breaks off, and then the venom that's inside the barb goes into your skin, into your flesh, and that's what causes the rash to happen. So that's the difference between a poisonous and a, a, a venomous animal and a poisonous animal. Poisonous animal, you would have to actually eat it. Can't read that way. A poisonous animal, you'd actually have to eat the animal, or you'd have to take the, 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 the animal's skin and rub it on an open wound for it to have any effect. So venoms are injected and poisons are ingested or so they're eaten or, or go through your skin. He's quite calm at the moment. He's um, he's behaving himself. So arachnids, the, 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 the one thing that all arachnids have that is the same, that you can kind of distinguish them from other animals is they have eight legs. So it's, it's not really easy for me to show you the eight legs on this one. So I'm gonna show you the eight legs on a different animal, this animal, um, it, it passed away, died uh, six or eight months ago, maybe maybe a bit longer than that, and we kind of dried him out so that we could use him to show body parts of the scorpion. So um, if you look carefully, if I get him, let's see if I get that. You can just about see the bulb, and on the end of the bulb is the. Um, is the sting. Can you pass that bit of paper, Billy? And I'll just see if I put this piece of paper behind it. You go back there. It makes it a bit easier to um, to see. Can you see that bulb and the sting now? Okay, you can just about see that. And then if you look again, it has eight legs. It's got four on one side of its body and four on the other. Okay, so if you look and there's four on this side, four on the other. And then also right in the front, it has these two pincers. They are not legs, okay? They are nothing to do with legs. They are more like hands or fingers. Um, and in a spider, which we'll show you at a, a later date, um, we'd actually call them, I'm just gonna cover them over for a second. We'd actually call them petty palps in a spider. So these things here, these things here are what the scorpion would grab it, grab hold of its prey with, okay, these pincers. And there's a general rule of thumb in that the bigger the pincer, the big fat, heavy pincers like this, the bigger the pincer, the less potent or the less dangerous the venom is from this particular animal. So there's different size pincers. And if you're a scorpion with a really long, thin pincer, you tend to have more virulent or more toxic venom, more dangerous venom. If you're a scorpion with big fat pincers like this, your venom's not as bad. And it's pretty much like a bee sting if this was to get you. It's not nice. It's not pleasant to be stung by one, but it's unlikely that you would um, you would cut, that you would suffer any kind of ill effect other than the, the effects of a, maybe a, a, a nasty bee sting. The theory behind it is if you've got big fat chunky pincers like this, those pincers are strong enough to catch and crush the life out of the thing that you're going to eat and you only then inject the venom if you really need to if it was a slightly bigger animal than you uh, would normally get hold of so if i put um for example if i put a cricket in with this with these scorpions then it will crush the animal with the uh, with the pincer um if I, if I put a cockroach in which is a much bigger animal it would possibly grab hold of the cockroach do quite a bit of um crunching and then it would inject 
we would use the venom just to the, the, the bulb and the sting to inject a little bit of venom just so that um so that it, it, it paralyzed the animal and the animal couldn't hurt it okay uh, eyes on top of the head and here you can't really see them very well but if i right on the end of my finger there there's a little round dot that's where the scorpion's eyes are okay so some of the questions that, um, that that Chris has posed for you, I'm going to try and give you some of the uh, some of the answers to them now. So the, the, I know one of the questions that he asked was, um, "What is the uh, what is the most dangerous scorpion in the world?" And uh, that happens to have a quite an interesting name. It's called a death a death stalker, uh, and it's only one of about 25 species of scorpion that can have any real long-term effect and, and kill humans um not everyone who's stung by a scorpion dies even if it's a, a, a deadly species not every person's going to die from that often it depends on um how your body reacts to the types of proteins that the, ven that the venom's made up with um and some people can go into anaphylactic shock in the same way that some people can also um Close that door, please, mate. Um, sorry, some people go into anaphylactic shock if a, if a bee stings them. So um, it depends on the actual the person, how much venom is injected, type of scorpion. There's a lot of things to take into consideration uh, that would cause your death if you were to be stung by one. There's around about between 1,500 and 2,000 species of scorpion in the world, and only 25 of them can cause you any real danger. So there's not that many of them. That are um, that are going to be any real cause for concern. The biggest in the world is um, giant Asian species, uh, giant Asian forest scorpion, um, and this one here is probably about five or six inches long. Maybe if I was to if I was to take its tail down, it's probably maybe five or six inches long. Giant scorpions get to nine inches, so another half as half as big again as these. Um, to uh, to um, to show you the, the kind of size that they get to. I'm just going to take this uh, this lid off again and give you another look at him. So, unfortunately, you can't really tell anymore. But this one here was before it passed away. This was a female, and females tend to be she's because she's dried out and desiccated now. You can't really tell. She looks the same size as him, but when she was alive, she would have been much wider than this and much deeper as well they have a much thicker body um and basically it's like it was for the stick insects if you remember on friday for those who've seen it um the, the stick insects are bigger females are bigger because they are the ones that give birth they're the ones that, that lay eggs or the ones that, that give birth to scorpions they give birth to live young and the first thing that the babies will do is climb up onto the parents backs and they'll spend quite a bit of time the, the, the white in coloration, if you Google um, baby scorpions online, you'll see the white in coloration and they, um, they'll spend several weeks living on top of the parent, on top of the female, and she'll actually feed and care for them. So she'll tend the babies um, for, for quite some time until they shed and, and turn black and then become more independent. Then she, she has a, a parental role as, as well. I'm just going to, just for a sec, Chris, have you, did you say there was another poll? That needed to be done. Uh, so we'll do our we've got some polls for those questions at the end. Yeah. Um, suppose just really a quick reminder of uh, how the session is going to how the session is going to play out. So we've done our introductions. Uh, you're telling us all about scorpions. We're going to save some questions to the end. So if you've got any questions, uh, you can use the the question function as part of the webinar to send those questions in. And then Ian will answer those questions at the at the end. And also, if you've had the chance to go on to wildieswildlife.com and download the question sheet, uh, then uh, we will give the answers to that as well. And we'll do it a bit like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and we'll do this as a series of, of polls, and people can vote for the answer that they think is correct. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, scorpions. Um, the there is a species of scorpion. Uh, that's in the UK, uh, in the wild, basically. Uh, what happened was um, th 
they would they escaped now there's different stories about how they escaped one is um, someone actually bought them from a pet shop and let them go in a railway station another one is that the railway station used to have um cargo fruits and things coming through on a regular basis and that um shipments were coming through from other countries with this particular species of scorpion and, and odd ones escaped and eventually they formed a small colony of them they're called yellow-tailed scorpions and um, there's a thriving colony of them in this i think it's called onga the the, the the station where they are and there's a thriving colony of wild scorpions in the uk there's also um they're not real scorpions there's an animal called a pseudo scorpion which exists in the UK as well, and that's a naturally occurring animal. Uh, when I was working in the museum in 1998 in our World Museum in Liverpool, um, we found one. We would we would go out and um, we were working on a, on a on a show called Venom. You know, and the kids who were watching this won't remember it. Some of the adults who were with them might well do. Um, and we were working on a, 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 a thing called Venom. It was there for about a year, um, and it was talking about we we. we speakers to one about uh, venomous plants and animals it was our job was to do that but most days and we're looking after these animals that were on display and we would go out and we would um, sweep net um in, in long grass to try and find insects that were suitable for the poison dart frogs that we had on display and one time we actually caught us they're not uh, they're not as common as you would expect we caught we caught a pseudo scorpion so that's worth having a look at on google as well and then it's also worth having a look in the areas that you might come across them, see if you can find them, they're harmless, they can't hear you at all, but they're really strange, quite an interesting, uh, quite an interesting little animal as well, yeah. Okay, so, um, I've kind of, I'm, I'm not sure if I've covered everything for you there, Chris, have I covered every, um, every aspect, or, I'm not sure there's anything else that, might be worth mentioning about films. Films? Oh, <laughs> I know what <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there is um there is a film that was um that came out a few years ago. It was a bit before CGI got as good. I mean CGI is great now, isn't it? You know, if you look at the Marvel stuff and that, it's amazing. It was a little bit before that time. And uh, it was about a king who um, who was a scorpion. Uh, and one of the questions I think that we produce for you is who was the star in that? Well, I'm not going to tell you exactly who he is, but what I will say instead is um, he was in a, a, he was in a, another movie quite recently where the CGI was a lot better, and um, and that was called uh, Jumanji. So there's two versions Jumanji there's, uh, that have just recently come out. He was in that as well. Um, he's a bit of a rock, this guy, solid. So yeah, uh, you might uh, you might you might be able to figure out who he is from that. Yeah. Can, is there anything else there, sir? I, I think we're good. I think yep. we're good. Are okay. we ready to take some? We'll are we ready question. to take some questions? Yeah, let's see. Uh, okay. See so, people have submitted some questions. So here we go. The first question is from Anwin Moore, and it asks, "How many types of scorpion are there, and how many types of scorpion are deadly?" Okay, so there's about twenty-five that can kill, and of about there's between one thousand five hundred and two thousand different types. And sometimes the reason that um, that scientists aren't 100% certain on is it 1500, is it 1507, is it 2006? There's some, one of the interesting things about it is um, DNA fingerprinting of all species of plants and animals now has, has meant that lots of species uh, are being split and um, categorized as being different animals. Uh, one of the uh, ones I was listening about a couple of days ago was, you know, the, the people are having the back gardens, little wrens, they call them jenny wrens or winter wrens. Um, we all assumed that the, the wren that we get in our back garden is the same as the wren that you get in Scotland and the same as the wren that you get in Kent and the same as the wren as you get in Ireland and, and DNA fingerprinting because the um, researchers are able to to, to go down to the to the tiniest little detail uh, has meant that they're now considering splitting the wren that is in the UK from the one that's in on the island of Ireland and saying that they're two different types of wren because they're not genetically close enough to one another 
to be classed as the same one. And that kind of thing happens with, with spiders, it happens with the um, with insects, it happens with scorpions. Um, so the number 1500 could go up to, once all the species that they know have been genetically fingerprinted, could go up to way beyond 2000 uh, to different animals. And then also more animals are discovered on a, on, on, on a, on a yearly, weekly, daily basis throughout the world as we as, as scientists go out and do and do more and more research on on places that are that are that are, that are not really known to man as much as you would do as, as you would your own back garden so yeah we do this, this species discovered all the time so the number goes up and up and up and then also unfortunately some species become extinct and so the number goes down a bit more as well so this particular one here this is this emperor scorpion this um, is now on the endangered species list i think it's on cites too which means that you can't buy the you can't just buy one of these anymore from 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 another country and bring them into our into, into the UK. They have to come in with a specific uh, certification to allow you to do that. And one of the reasons that these are so rare is because they were they, in the seventies and the eighties when people started to get into exotic animals. These become really really popular. They were big, chunky, easy to look after. They fed well. And um, so they were over collected in the wild. Thousands and thousands of them were collected from from West Africa, which is where they come from. And so they become more and more um, rare in the wild. So they've put limitations on on the numbers that are collected now. And in fact, in the UK, you don't see. You should always see when you get a list of of exotic animals. You should always see the name of the animal, and then after the name, it would sometimes say WC after it, and that stands for wild caught. You don't see that with this scorpion anymore. They're always captive bred, as this one was um, uh, by a friend of mine who lives over in Nottingham. Um, you don't see wild caught emperor scorpions anymore. You do other species because they're not uh, they're not on that same endangered species list. But yeah, um, they are. They're all captive bred now. Any more okay. questions? Sir? Oh, we've got lots of questions. Lots of questions. See if we can some board. So it's facing that way just for a little bit so that people can get a better look at the side side view of it as well sorry so, so here we go here's a question from anthony crane is a, a scorpion so venomous it can kill you 25 species are oh, yeah but like i said before you know i mean i've been stung by bees a lot in, the, in my time um, and the first couple of times i was stung by a bee it was painful didn't like it well I'd rather it never happened but um but I was okay within a, you know an hour or so. The, 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 the pain disappears, uh, and then I went and put a shed up with a friend who lives in Wales who keeps honeybees. He's got fifteen hives, and he, he obviously collects honey from these bees. And he put the shed up not too far away from a hive. And it was a funny day. The weather was a bit weird, and the bees came out and they stung me and my mate. His name we call him Kipper, and it stung me about fifteen times. Different bees stung me, and I was stung in the back of the neck stung on my head stung on my hands um, and i was really not happy about that at all i was sick i i couldn't drive home i was i wasn't great for about five or six hours in in, in kippers and i had this uh, and painkillers and stuff till the pains had gone and the venom had come out of my system um, and then years later i was stung again by a single bee and it made me feel really sick so i'm kind of in a position where um I maybe need to avoid being stung by bees because my I've been stung that many times now that my my my, my internal system's not happy with it. Um, and the same kind of thing happened with spiders as well. I've got we've got lots of spiders here, probably more spiders than anything else. Um, and New World spiders, I'll show you when when you see them in, in a couple of days. They have um, their first form of defence is to flick hairs in the air. And if those hairs touch me now, I get really really itchy because I've kept them for. 30 years and I've had these hairs on me for so long my body's just not happy with them anymore so Billy deals with that species of that type of spider now I don't really have a lot to do with them I have, I have to do with um, more to do with the old world, old world species I'll explain how that works later on in, in, in another webinar but, um, but yeah I have to avoid certain things now um, so if I was stung by one of them 25 species it probably act badly because of, because venoms aren't great with me anymore but if you're young and, and fit and healthy and um, uh, you could get stung by what would be termed as a deadly species and not die, you're not necessarily going to die because you've been stung by one. Okay, okay. sir. 
Right, here we go. So, um, next question, and I think you may have answered this, is what is the deadliest type of scorpion? That's Deathstalker, yeah. There's another, what's the other one, Billy? There's Deathstalker and there's another one, isn't there? Oh, a fat tail, yeah. So there's another, and there's, it's not a competition, but, you know, some people would say Deathstalker, some would, people would say fat tail, yeah. Harvey McCabe asks, what age do scorpions live to? Uh, so maybe 10 or 15 years, I would imagine, yeah, some of them. Not as, I've never had scorpions live as long as I have spiders. I've had a spider that's lived for about 25 years. Uh, that was a, uh, a curly hair, and that was she bred and produced babies three or four times in her lifetime as well. Um, but yeah, maybe 15 years from scorpion. Uh, Chantal Lee asks, do people eat scorpions? They do in, yeah, they do in some countries. And that may well have... Um, uh, help with the demise of certain species in certain parts of the world because they do eat them yeah now i've never tried one myself uh, but i think my friend mark did at one point i'm sure he did when he went to thailand i'll ask him <laughs> one of my, my, my next one or and I, I think we've got to um i think we've got to consider that you know i eat uh, things like squid and octopus um i'll have crab i'll have sh shrimps um, anything like that, and they're all invertebrates, and that's what this is. This is an invertebrate, so depending on where you are, this is a, a valid food source. You know, it's uh, don't know, no idea what it, what it would taste like, but yeah, um, they are eaten in certain parts of the world. Uh, Kev Martin asks, How are they poisonous? It's not, they're not poisonous. No, there's no such thing as a poisonous scorpion, they're venomous, so they have this bulb at the end of the tail that is filled with venom. And then the sting at the end here is what the, the, the scorpion in, um, pushes into your skin to inject the venom into you. And venoms are made up of proteins. Um, Andrew Farnell asks, what's your biggest scorpion? This one. These uh, emperor scorpions are the biggest. We have had others in the past, um, but uh, this is at the moment right now here. At home is, is this emperor, yeah. Um, Lizzie Sims asks, where is the scorpion's mouth? So, uh, let's try it with this one. It's probably not easier than doing it with that one. Uh, so it's right in the front. I don't know if I can like, get that. It's right in the front of the face there. It's not easy to see. Whoops, get your claws away from me, please, mister. Uh, it's not that easy to see, but the mouth parts are just there. Hang on one second, let me just put him back where he should be. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure you can see that. I'll tell you what I'll try and do, sir. I'll, uh, I'll get my macro lens out and I'll see if I can get a photograph of it and post it online on the website. I see that's probably the easiest way to do that. So if she looks, it looks out for it. What did you say the, the name was? Um, it was uh, Lizzie Sims. Lizzie, if you, if you hang on for a little bit, uh, I'll see if I can get a photograph of the mouth parts. Uh, with a, I've got a special lens that'll do it, and I'll, um, and I'll see if, uh, if, I can get the, if I can get them on, on film for you, and I'll post it online. Uh, next question. How long do scorpions live for? We've just done that one, say, 15. <laughs> um, what is the smallest scorpion in the world? Uh, Sam Slater asked that question. I'm not sure what it would be called, they are the but the scorpions there are some species that are super tiny like um same kind of size as a um so oh, i live under the bricks uh, uh, and i support a uh, meal uh, not a meal what are they called billy they live under the live under bricks with the little shell box can't they what they're called on top of my head woodlouse thank you yeah it's about the same size of woodlouse yeah uh, we've sort of had this question, which was, what is a scorpion's lifespan? Yeah. And that's by Nihan uh, Sagi. And... Uh, have, sorry, sir, can I just have a little bit of a shout out? My little mate, Harry and Jessica, should be listening in. I don't know if they've sent you the question, but it'd be cool if they did. I haven't seen it yet, but I'll, I'll keep scrolling through. Um, from Lizzie Sims, what colour can scorpions be? So the, the range, if you look online, they can the, the, any, anything from a very, very light, um, kind of like creamy colour all the way through to jet black. 
And the interesting thing about them is if you get a black light, which is a, 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 um, it's a sp specific um, light from, from, the, from the color spectrum and you shine it on them, they look fluorescent white. The, that animal in the dark with a black light on top of it would look fluorescent white. And in fact, that's how they, they catch them. So if you, if, you, if you wanted to go and find scorpions in the wild, you don't do it in the daytime. You do it in the middle of the night. You wait till it's dark. You get a, a black light and you just walk out into the desert or walk out into the forest or wherever you think that scorpion's going to be. And you shine this torch and you can't see the light and the torch. And the, and you don't be able to see it. But it sh when it shines on a scorpion, they literally stick out like a sore thumb. They glow in the dark. I'll see if I can get a, a photo of one of them online as well. See, I'll see uh, uh, of, a, of a scorpion, a black light. I'll see about permissions for that because I haven't got a black light myself. But I, there'll be a, there'll be photographs out there. I might be able to, to, to put one on the website as well. Yeah. Uh, Maria from Three C. Um in green bag says how do you know which is a male and which is a female it's not as easy with a scorpion as it is with a spider oh, and it's i went on uh, thursday i'm going to do, show you some praying mantids it's really easy with praying mantids it depends on the type of animal but with a scorpion the males tend to be thinner along the sides so you get a thinner body shape going down the animal and also the depth is less so females tend to be wider and thicker, but it's not easy to do it. You know, you need a couple and then you can see the two. My, I've got a friend who, who works in the museum and he can, you could give him a hundred scorpions, a hundred of these things, and he'll pick them out and go male, female, female, male. He's brilliant at it, but he's got it because he deals with them so often and for so for so many different animals. He kind of, he's got the eye for it. He can, he can literally look at them and, Within a split second, they'll tell you that's a male, that's a female. It's but it, it, it's because he's dealt with them a lot. He really knows what he's looking for. Miss Coogan wants to know how the how big the biggest scorpion was. She's not listening very well, is she, Miss Coogan? Uh, they get to nine inches, Zoe. So about another three inches more than this. So probably like that, about that kind of size. From the tip of his tail all the way down to here, quite big. Uh, if these things ever come up, I'll maybe get a couple and we'll bring them to school. You can have them as your class pet. Uh, Lily Grace wants to know how long the scorpions live for. I think we've had that question. We've had a few times, yeah. Um, Maya Hadassi wants to know: Are there any scorpions that don't sting? So no, all scorpions have. A, 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 a venomous bulb, but so pseudo scorpions don't. If you look at them, I don't think they 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 it kind of stops here. So so there's none of this um, tail and bulb. It just stops it's like a like a blank across the top. But it's not a true scorpion. Um, James and Becky McDonald want to know: Are scorpions vertebrates? No, invertebrate. So the difference between a vertebrate and an, an invertebrate is if you if where you are now, if you put your hand around, around your back and you feel along your backbone there, those it's not one single bone that it's lots and lots and lots of bones all kind of linked together. And each of those bones is called a vertebrate. And if you've got lots of vertebrate, you're a vertebrate. You've got a backbone. So there are five different types of vertebrate. There are fish, amphibians, reptiles birds and mammals so if you're not one of them you're an invertebrate it's the only two the, the, the animal kingdom is split by that that's the defining thing for, for animals you're either a vertebrate or an invertebrate so they don't have a backbone what they have instead is a hard outer shell it's called an exoskeleton an exo you think of external it means that the skeleton is on the outside of the body so for this to grow in the same way that the um the stick insect grew on Friday last week, these things have to crack open this shell, crawl out of it, expand themselves by sucking in oxygen and blowing the bodies up a bit, and then they'll harden. Once they've hardened, they won't grow any more until they next shed the skin. Um, okay, some more questions then. Um, 
Anwin Moore says, can scorpions be used as an antibody to fight viruses? It's an interesting question. That There's all sorts of research being done at the moment with scorpion venoms. And the most it is the most expensive, isn't it? The most expensive liquid in the world, more expensive than any other liquid ever, is scorpion venom. The reason is you don't get a lot of uh, venom from that bulb. There's not a lot. There's enough to do the damage it needs to do to the animal that's going to eat or to defend itself. But there's not a lot inside that bowl. So in order to get it, I mean, how many scorpions we need to get a pint of that? It's uh, the, 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 the liquid venom itself is the most expensive liquid on the planet. And research is being done for, for what they can do with these proteins. Yeah, there's all sorts of things that they're hoping could happen with them. Same with spiders, the same with snakes. Um, so two questions from Liz Hughes, um, and it is um, how fast can scorpions move, and also uh, what do scorpions eat? So and that's uh, Dan and Lily. Uh, how fast can they move? Sometimes too fast for my liking, to be honest. Depends on the mood of the animal. So when I went to get him before out of his tank, he wasn't very happy. He's obviously calmed down now. He knows there's, there's nothing really to be worried about anymore. Uh, when I got him out of the tank, he wasn't happy and he moved very quickly. Um, quick enough. Uh, you have to be careful around them um, in case you, in, ca in case it does get you. Um, but right now, I mean, he's calm as a cucumber, isn't he? He's just quite happy sitting here watching watching that video camera and, 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 and he's quite content. And what was the other bit of that question, sir? Speed and then? Oh, what do they eat? Oh, eat. So literally anything they can catch and kill, they'll have a go at. So they'll eat mainly invertebrates. So they'll mainly eat. In, in, in this house, he eats locusts, um, black crickets, the bio roaches, and that's pretty much, oh, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that, I don't really try them on, it, on, on other things. Younger ones would, be, would often be given baby or younger versions of those three animals or they might be given wax moth larvae, a mealworm, uh, things like that. But uh, in the wild, if it can, if it can come across something and it's the, the, the animal is small enough for it to catch and kill, it will eat them, even down to small mice, mammals, and things as well. Um, I've got a clarification that's come in here. Um, this is uh, from from Alan Wildman. Oh. <laughs> And he, he tells us that the smallest scorpion in the world is the Microtitius wearing, and it measures just 12 millimetres. There we go. That is tiny. It's about the same size as a woodlouse. Really uh, but Alan, well, Alan can obviously hear me, can't he? Alan, can you just double check uh, how, um, does it give you any, any indication of how venomous that animal is, or how, um, how dangerous it is? It's probably not one of the, the top 25, but... It'd just be interesting to see um, such a small animal. What kind of what kind of prey it could have? Yeah, is it possible? Question for it? from William Ricard: What is the rarest species of scorpion? Of scorpion of the, of the rarest species of scorpion that um, that are currently kept in a regular uh, regularly by by us. Uh, are these? These are the only ones that I know of that are actually on CITES. Uh, I think the CITES too. So they're the only ones that, that require a license because of their rarity. There are others, some of the boofids, which are in that list of 25 that can that can cause you real harm. You need a license to keep them because they're a dangerous wild animal. So they they have a they have a different thing. It's the DWA license, a DWA license, sorry, which is which stands for dangerous wild animal, and that is. Um, is a certificate that came in in 1972, I think, um, and before 1972, in this country, in the, in the UK, you could keep a lion in the back garden if you wanted to. Whereas now, what's that? Oh, it's a death door, yeah. Uh, this, whereas now, um, the uh, that license comes into, in, into play. You cannot keep anything uh, that's on that uh, dangerous wild animal list without that particular license. Whereas this thing, you need in order for you to be able to uh, move this thing around if you like from country to country you need a certificate to say uh, off the off the 
um, of death threat, it's called, to say that you, uh, you that this is a captive bit animal, or that, it, that, that you know where it came from in the wild, and that you, you, you're able to, to sell it or gift it to other people, yeah. Here's a question from Ryan Parker, and it is, how is venom produced in the scorpion's body? It's a form, it's a form, it's types of proteins that the animal has in its body. So um, it's probably easy to explain with a rattlesnake as well. As I, I kind of always use rattlesnakes for, the, for, for this kind of um, anal uh, uh, analogy. So a rattlesnake, like a scorpion, like a spider, it produces the, 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 the venoms and then it holds it in a gland behind the eye in a, in a, in a snake or in the bulb here or behind the teeth in a, in a, in a, um, in a spider. Now, it's not like water from a tap. You can go in your kitchen, you can turn a tap on, you can leave that tap running all day, you can go to work, come back home, and that tap will still have water coming out of it. You can turn it off. It doesn't work like that with venoms. They have to make it uh, with the proteins that are in their body. And so it's quite a precious commodity. They don't want to waste it. So they're all opportunistic feeders, all these animals. Um, the, the, so they'll catch and kill anything that they come across that they think is big enough or small enough for them to be able to handle without hurting themselves. And so it's purely coincidental that this animal, its proteins, the, the venoms, can kill a human. And the reason for that is these evolved long before humans did, and the venoms evolved long before humans even existed on the planet. And yet the proteins that this animal creates in, uh, within its venom it's coincidental, but it is able to kill, for some species, able to kill a human. So when it man when it's made the, the venom that's inside this bulb here, it doesn't want to hurt you. And it doesn't want to kill a cat or a snake or any animal at all that's bigger than it can eat. Because once it's used the venom, imagine it's so, so a cat comes along, a cat snips the, the scorpion, the scorpion stings the cat. The cat runs away, scared. It's now got a, uh, a sore nose because the scorpion stung it. Three minutes later, a locust pops in front of the scorpion. That scorpion was good, could have possibly caught, killed and eaten. It's now used its venom up on a cat. It now is unable to catch its food and, 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 and kill it and eat it. So it doesn't want to use that venom on anything at all, except for what it's feeding on. It's just unfortunate. And it quite, quite often the, the, the people who are stung on a regular basis or bitten on a regular basis by spiders and by scorpions and by snakes happen to be in developing countries. And the problem with that is a lot of people will walk around in, in the, the generally warmer countries. So they walk around in a sandal or they'll walk around barefooted and they stand on the scorpion. When they stand on it, its first reaction is to sting doesn't want to sting it's not doing it because it's being mean it's doing it to defend itself because it thinks it's being attacked and then obviously you've then been stung or you've been bitten if it's a spider or you've been bitten if it's a snake and that's where the, that's what that's how the, the problem occurs it knows it can't eat me so it doesn't want to sting me to eat me it, the only reason it would sting me and i'm having i've been moving this animal around now for 20 minutes or 20 minutes or something i don't know i've been moving this animal around for a while now and it's not once used its sting it's not trying to grab me with its pincers and stab. it doesn't want to do that because it doesn't know when it next is going to come across food source so it would only go so far as to try and sting me as I, if i was to do something that really upset it and it wasn't happy with uh, so we've had um, a message from uh maria uh in green bank and she says that scorpion venom costs 39 million dollars per gallon there you go. So there we go. <laughs> that kind of money for a gallon of venom. But, you know, I mean, the, the research is, is fantastic. My friend Maxine, she work, and there's uh, another gentleman I know called Paul, they work in the School of Tropical Medicine in Liverpool. And some of the stuff that those people do there, as far as research and this kind of stuff is concerned, is just incredible. Amazing. Amazing. My friend Paul, he works in the, in the, in the venomous snake unit. Um, and he milks the venom from the snakes for, for scientists to do research on. The stuff they do there is amazing. Um, 
Question from Dylan McCutcheon, which is, do scorpions have any predators? Loads. The, the, the flip side of the coin is if you are uh, uh, the kind of animal, so if you're an insectivore or you're, um, you're, you're bigger than a scorpion and you think you can eat it, it's a fair game. Lots of animals eat them. The classic one, I suppose, would be uh, meerkats are renowned for digging them up and, and eating them. If you go, if you Google online meerkat v scorpion, you'll get loads and loads of videos of of meerkats feeding on them. Um, it's one of the, the, their favourite items, actually. I mean, it's very clever what they do. The first thing that they'll do is they'll bite this sting off. So they bite that bit of the tail away, and then the scorpion's defenceless, and they can take the time eating it then. So yeah, um, meerkat v scorpion, or mongoose v scorpion, and yeah, you'll see that going on. How many baby scorpions can a scorpion have? About 15, I think. 15 to 20, not many. You've got to imagine that if I do that, they've got to be able to fit on that bit of the body there. Okay, and they're probably as big as your fingernail, maybe. As big as your fingernail. If you Google um, scorpions on babies, uh, baby scorpions on mother's back, you see they end up like a little, looks like a little pile of um, tiny white scorpions. That's what it is, a little pile of tiny, about 15 of 15 or 20 of them, pretty much. It probably depends on the, on the size of the scorpion. That would depend on how many babies it, it give birth to. Sort of related question, um, which is how many uh, baby scorpions will a female produce in a lifetime? That's from Elliot Glennon. So, uh, but probably once, the, once they reach sexual maturity and they're old enough, big enough to breed, they probably breed maybe once, once a year, I would imagine. I've never bred scorpions before. I only we I keep one or two really just so I can take them to school and use them with the, with the kids in school. It's more spiders that we keep here that that we we go for where breeding is concerned. Um, question from William Ricard: Do any scorpions live in water? <laughs> I've got them in my pond. Should have pond it. <laughs> There's a thing called a water scorpion. It's not a true scorpion again, but they do live. Um, they do live in water in British ponds, yeah, you can find them. And they look just like a scorpion. They're amazing little things. I've got some, yeah, in my pond. See if I can find some maybe for the next webinar. So, yeah, I'll have a little bit of a pond dip and see. Uh, question from Ayan Singh. What, what, sorry, which countries do most scorpions live in? So they like it warm. So if you think about, if you've got, if you imagine the globe, you've got the globe, haven't you? And then right in the middle of the globe is a line that goes right, right around us, doesn't it? That's called the equator. Above and below that are two other quite distinct lines. One's the Tropic of Capricorn and one's the Tropic of Cancer. Most scorpions occur within that band around the world. For the, the further north you go and the further south below the Tropic of Cap Capricorn and Cancer, the colder it's becoming and you're into more temperate regions rather than being in tropical regions. And the further up you go, the less species of scorpions that you're going to find. The colder it is, the less chance you're going to find them. Question from Charlotte Sandberg. Is a scorpion still venomous after it's dead? Or can a dead scorpion still sting it? Okay. Uh, so that I could take that bulb. Can you see that? I could, I mean, that is sharp. I could push that into my finger now if I wanted to. I'm not going to because I'm not daft, but I could push that into my finger. But that bulb has got it's dry, that would be like a powder inside there now. Maybe not even that's absolutely solid. So the venom in there cannot go inside that stinger anymore into my skin. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, what's the average weight of a scorpion? That's a uh, it's a bit of a question. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can. If I was to put him on my hand, I'd probably feel the weight of him. He's maybe, I don't know, fifteen grams, is he something like that? Maybe twenty grams. He's not heavy, but I'd feel him on my hand. Whereas if you think about the one that uh, my brother Alan, Alan Wildman, by the way, the other day, a few minutes ago, that's my brother. The one he's googled, the tiniest one of them. You probably wouldn't even notice that was on you because it's that tiny. Um, think about a woodlouse in the garden. If you go and pick up a woodlouse, that's about the weight of that scorpion, I would imagine. 
So uh, yeah, it depends on its size. That the you know there'll be an average weight for this particular species and an average weight for a different species, and this is about maybe 15, 20 grams. Uh, so some last two questions that we'll do. Um, yeah. This question is from Andrew Farnell, and it says, what is the name of the Empire Scorpion? The Emperor Scorpion, but as in, as in, do I give it a name as in, like Dave or Karen or something, you mean? Or I'm, I'm guessing so, yeah. Pet name. Uh, it doesn't have a pet name. But I tell you what I'll do. Um, I'll give it whatever name Harry and Jessica want me to give it. There you go, Harry. I need a name for this scorpion. Jessica, come up with a name for it, please. Your mum can text me the answer, and that's that. It's going to be whatever you want it to be called. And I'll tell everyone next time I come on. We'll, we'll announce that on the website. Um... Well, yeah, now it's got a name. The thing is, right, what you need to understand, Billy's geckos have all got names, and when they come out, we'll bring them all out at some point. I'll tell you what they're called. Are they all, can I say all the names or not? I probably can. Can I? Yeah, sure I can. Except for one. He's got the most bizarre names. But, um, so 150 spiders, I barely even remember Billy's name some days. I'm not going to remember 150 names for for all the individual spiders that we've got. So most of these animals don't have names. Uh, and yes. last two questions, which we'll do. Uh, this is from uh, Dean, who's from Greenbank. Yeah, and he, uh, he asks, uh, how painful is it if the scorpion uh, pinches you? Pinches? Um, I avoid being pinched. Because it, it's not nice. It's a bit like, um, have you ever been to a beach and been um, trying to back kind of, what do they call it when you're, pool, uh, when you go dipping with putting it on a beach in the, in the pool, rock pooling, rock pooling, that kind of thing then. You ever been rock pooling and you found a crab and the crab pinches you? It's a bit like that. And so obviously, depending on the size of the pin set, will depend on how sore it can be when you when the, when the uh, when they grab you. Now the thing about this one is obviously different to a crab. When a crab gets you, you know it's like out when you pull your finger away. And with this thing, if it gets you, you know it's not happy. The next thing it's going to do is bring that over and try and sting you. So you, it's a little bit more scary when this pinches you than it is when a crab does. But if you go rock pooling on a, on a, on a beach. <laughs> um, so the, the last question, which I suppose is a, a neat way for us to talk about something that's coming up. This is from Harvey McCabe. And he says, well, I know this is a scorpion webinar, but how do you differentiate spider species? Probably not a question to answer now, but a good chance to plug something that's going to happen uh, next week. Next Monday. Is it Monday? Next yeah, Monday, yeah. Spider? Yeah, OK. So, um Initially, what you would do is you would split the spiders into Old World and New World. So Old World is uh, Africa. If you, if you think about, if you think of the uh, Atlantic Ocean, if you drew a line right down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean uh, and you're standing in the UK, I need to think of a map now, and I've drawn a line down the middle. So the United States, as I look at a map, I've got uh, the United States on, on this side, and I've got Africa and Australasia and all of on that side. That is the old world. And, on, and America and South, North and South America, Canada, that's the new world. So you would initially split spiders into those two things, old and new. And then within the new world, there are lots of different types of spiders, loads and loads of different types. And in the, and in, and the same in the old world, lots and lots of different types. But the types that we keep here, they could all be kind of termed tarantula which is technically not exactly correct, really. But I don't want to go into too much until I've actually got them on this board so I can show you uh, properly. But they, they, there are hundreds of different types. OK, so should we do uh, the answers to our, our quiz? We set oh. we put on the website uh, some, some questions, which people could have the chance of answering as we were, we were going along. Um, so we'll put the first question up. So here's how it will work. We'll put the question up. Uh, we'll give it 30 seconds, let people vote, and then Ian yeah. will give us the answer. 
Okay, so here's the first question on your screen now. Uh, where does this species of scorpion come from? This is Pandinus imperata. That's its Latin name, and it's an um, uh, emperor scorpion. So that's what you're, you're looking for, where they are. And we're going to close the poll in. Oh, still some votes coming in. Have to get them in quickly. Three, two, one. Time is up. Uh, and people have said 67% have said West Africa, 11% have said Northern Europe, 22% have said East Asia. What's the correct answer? It's West Africa. Well done. Um, next question, which is on your screen now. What type of can be found wild in the UK. What type of scorpion can be found wild in the UK? Please vote. Okay. Uh, seventy nine percent have said yellowtail, twenty one percent have said emperor, no one has said Asian forest. What's the correct answer, Ian? It's yellowtail, well done. Great. You've been listening to it. All right. Here's the next question. Why is this species endangered in the wild? I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. Okay, results are on the screen. 59% said overcollected, 30% have said loss of habitat, and 11% have said used as a food source. What's the correct answer? So um, it's generally believed because of the overcollection. But to be fair, those who've said that um, it was loss of habitat, that will have had a, a real impact on this and all other species in West Africa as well at the same time. So, yeah, great. Next question on your screen, what kind of animal is it? Think the number of legs. People are getting much faster at voting. I'm hoping by the end of this, with a bit of luck, we'll have um, the scorpion's new name. I'm just wondering if Jessica and Harry have, uh, have logged on or they're going to... Um... Here's the result on the screen. We've got 74% think it's an arachnid, 22% think it's an insect, and 4% think it's a crustacean. It's an arachnid. Great. Okay, it has a sting, but what does it inject with that sting? Sixty-four percent have voted. Just to give it a few more seconds, let some more votes come in. Okay, I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one, and that's that closed. Okay, I'm rather relieved that nobody said orange juice. Four percent have said poison, and ninety-six percent have said venom. Uh, Billy said tequila. I'm not sure whether that's uh, poison or not. The venom. <laughs> Uh, next question. What is the biggest species of scorpion? Oh, this is close to this one. What do you reckon they've gone for? Well, I'm hoping they've gone for the Asian, the, the, the giant forest, or they might have gone for this. Ooh, oh, that, that's made people, some people change their votes. Let's have a little look. Let's close the poll. Votes. That's cheating. I didn't know you uh, could. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're letting them cheat, see? Here we go. <laughs> so 30% uh, said Emperor Scorpion, 67% uh, said Giant Forest, and 4% said Yellowtail. It's Giant Forest, yeah. Its Latin name is Heterometrus Swarmadarmi, isn't it? I think. Heterometrus Swarmadarmi, or you can have a look at that. I looked at that online. <laughs> Okay, 
This was a bit of a tricky one, this one. Uh, the question is, why are scorpions in the newspapers every day? Uh, I never mentioned that at all, but do you know, so, there should be somebody who knows the answer to that. Oh, but there is somebody who knows the answer to that. Right. In fact, it looks like lots of people know the answer to that. <laughs> Going to close the poll in about another five seconds. Okay, there's the results on screen. 13% uh, think it's the name of a famous actress, 79% uh, say it's a zodiac sign, and 8% think it's a Marvel character. Yeah, it's a zodiac sign. If you go in, in newspapers every day, don't they? there's um, horoscopes, and one of the star constellations that we see in the night sky is Scorpio, which is a scorpion. And in fact, if you go outside, and think, I mean, we're really lucky at the moment, we've got lovely clear skies. If you go outside, uh, you can get it, there's an app, your parents can put on a phone, um, I think it's called Night Sky or something like that. You can actually point your phone into the sky and look around and you'll find all the different constellations. It like kind of locates them for you. Um, and if you find, I think it's the plough, between the plough and Orion, you'll find Scorpio. And you can actually see there's like two stars and then a load of a row of dots. And they make this the curve of the tail, which enables you to then pick out the shape of Scorpio, it's quite uh, quite easy to do and it's uh, great, you know, to, I mean, you've got to stay up a little bit later than perhaps you normally would, but it's uh, it's good to do, yeah. And we did it the other day. Third to last question, what do Scorpion's babies do when they're first born? Taking a closer poll in three, two, one. Um, Eighty-eight percent think it they climbs on its mother's back. Four percent think they go foraging for food. Eight percent think they use silk to fly away. So it's um, sitting on the mum's back. The mum looks after them for the first few weeks of their lives. Um, what is the most? What's the world's most dangerous scorpion called? Deathstalker, lesser brown scorpion, or whip scorpion? Okay, you're going to close the poll in three, two, one. Now, 85% uh, think it's Deer Stalker. Oh, sorry, Death Stalker, not Deer Stalker. 4% uh, think it's Lesser Brown Scorpion, and 11% think it's Whip Scorpion. Yeah, and it's a Death Stalker. Well done. Last question. And it's to do with that movie reference that we threw oh, in there. Yeah. No, and that was who played the Scorpion King in the movie? Seems to have some movie buffs out there. And I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one, and closed. Okay. Results are on screen. 7% uh, think Vin Diesel, 7% think Michael Clark Duncan, and 85% think Dwayne Johnson. Excellent. It was Mr. Johnson. You're right. So next uh, on Thursday, um, we are talking about what? Uh, praying mantis on Thursday. Now, I know last time it was one single species. We did McClay's spectre. And today we've done one single species in, in the Emperor Scorpion. On Thursday, there's at least three, four species of, of praying mantis we'll see when we go, go upstairs what uh, what we can bring down you need to have a look at some really strange looking things as well so uh, yeah so praying mantis on thursday and if people want to uh see a recording of this webinar or see some photographs um or register for that webinar on thursday or the one on monday they can go to www.wileyswildlife.com Dot com and there'll be an email coming out with that soon as well great so that's that's it for the day then yeah we have put a load of um we put some we, we put them um quizzes on as well sir we've done the um word searches have they gone on this 
So um, if you check the website in about half an hour, then yes, we'll put some quizzes and we'll put um, put the video online as well. Brilliant. Next one, everyone. Look forward to seeing you all on Thursday.